Hi and welcome to episode number 448 with whatsforchar.com. A couple of episodes back I mentioned that we would be covering a basic course in home distilling. This is the first episode of this series. Before we continue, distilling is illegal in some countries, so please check with your local authorities before getting involved in this. In any event, the process is very interesting and the science and understanding behind it will at the very least enrich your life. The first in this series covers the most basic form of distilling called freeze distillation. Again, before we continue, this method of distillation is only good for fortifying commercially produced wines or beers. To explain this, let's look at the distillation process. When the mash or fermentant liquid is distilled, there are a couple of components that emerge first. Methanol, ethanol and volatile oils are the main makeup of these. Ethanol is drinking alcohol, while methanol is toxic and volatile oils just taste really bad. When distilling with a pot still or refraction still, the methanol and volatiles emerge first, and these are called the heads. These heads are removed at a rate of 100 milliliters per 20 liters of mash. With freeze distilling, there is no way to remove the heads, and this is the reason that the process is only good for commercially produced wines. Commercially produced wines use specially developed yeasts that inhibit the development of methanol and volatiles, making it safe for use with freeze distillation. So now the question is, why would you do this? Freeze distillation is ideal for fortifying wines or increasing their alcohol content, and especially useful for saving poor quality wines or wines that have gone bad. So let's start. Freeze distillation relies on the simple principle that alcohol and water freeze at different temperatures. Water, as we all know, freezes at around 0 Celsius, depending on the barometric pressure, while ethanol freezes at minus 114 Celsius. This massive disparity means that if we freeze wine in our regular household freezer between minus 15 Celsius and minus 25 Celsius, the water content of the wine freezes, while the ethanol content remains liquid. This liquid is then drained from the frozen block, giving you a well-fortified and very well-clarified wine. Here are the calculations that will give you some insight into the resulting alcohol content of your distillate. Keep in mind that it is not only the ethanol that does not freeze. Included in the distillate will be most of the syrups or flavor component of the wine. This is a negligible amount but will add color and concentrated flavor to the resulting product. If you start with a liter of wine with an ABV of 13% and collect 500 ml of melt runoff, then you'll have a fortified wine with an ABV of just below 26%. If you collect just 250 ml runoff, you will have an ABV of just under 52%. So, let's start. I am going to do this in two different ways. The first method is by far the quickest, but not nearly as accurate as the second method. Line a large colander with cling wrap and pour in a litre of wine. The second method involves pouring a litre of wine into a food safe bottle. Place both of these in the freezer. Just remember that water-based liquids expand when frozen, and for this reason you really don't want to tighten the cap of the bottle. Screw it on loosely, otherwise you might end up bursting the bottle in the freezer. The following day, when everything is well frozen, remove these from the freezer. Remove the cap from the bottle and invert the bottle in a measuring jug. Place the colander over a large bowl. Lift the frozen wine and slide the cling wrap out from underneath the frozen wine. Simply leave both of these on the counter to start defrosting. 
The time it takes to collect the runoff is dependent on the ambient room temperature. As time passes, you'll notice the ice content of each method become more and more pale as the alcohol and syrup content of the frozen wine drains from the main mass. Using the calculations mentioned earlier, it is entirely up to you as to how much distillate you collect and just how strong you want your distillate to be. I've collected 500 ml from each 1 litre batch, meaning that my distillate has been fortified by 200%, giving me an ABV of 26%. You will also notice that the resulting distillate is much clearer in appearance than the original wine. This is due to the fact that a large percentage of impurities in the wine are trapped in the ice, and the small percentage that does escape into the distillate precipitates to the bottom of the distillate almost immediately. All that remains now is to pour the distillate or fortified wine into a food safe container for storage. And there it is, a 26% ABV fortified wine made from dirt cheap rosé. I will be publishing one video on distilling per week until the short course is complete. In the meantime, we will continue with normal food programming. Thanks for joining us today. Please subscribe to our channel and we'll see you again tomorrow.